Well, sometimes. All right, we're going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and we're going to focus on one, uh, one sentence here, and, but we'll cover the other things too. But let's read verses 1 through 4. Paul says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. And we'll go on here. Father, we thank you for your word. And we ask that you would give us uh, understanding today. Uh, to show us that <laughs> we need to be faithful to you. Faithful to one another. Faithful to, even to the world. Because we stand up for you and we are um, in your um, stead, as the Bible says, in this place of Christ on the earth, that people see us and, and because they don't see him. So, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be uh, faithful uh, and walk in truth for you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first I wanted to focus on was verse number two, but look at verse number one. He says, let a man so account of us. So this is what he wants people to recognize his position is when he says us he's talking i believe about himself and those who uh, are with him but it also applies to you and me because we are the same as paul we're not any different from paul even though he might have been a missionary and traveled uh, around uh, the mediterranean world and preached the gospel we don't do that but we are human beings just like he is we are christians just like he was and so he says let a man others Look at us and account of us to see who we are, what we are. He says, as the ministers of Christ, we are God's uh, Christ ministers here on the earth. He says, that's the way people should be looking at us. We are not like the world. We shouldn't be like the world, act like the world. He says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. I mean, God, Christ's servants. <laughs> I'm going to stop here for a second, see if I have my fly swatter. Somebody probably stole it from me. No. It gets moved around. Can somebody come up here and stand here and when it lands on me, hit it? No. <laughs> Where was I? We are, we are God's ministers. We are his servants. And then he goes on. He says, and stewards. Of the mysteries of God. What are the mysteries of God? Mysteries of God. Of things that things of God that he, in a sense, has kept hidden from the world. And and what we understand as Paul deals with that, he's dealing with the gospel message, uh, the specifics of what God has done through Jesus Christ. God could have said it at the beginning of the world, Adam, you sinned. So I'm going to send a, a man, Jesus Christ. This is, I'm coming in the flesh, and uh, I am going to be named Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, and I will die on a cross to pay the penalty for your sins and the sins of mankind. He could have done that, but he didn't do that. He wanted people to recognize who he was, God, and have faith in him and trust him. Uh, and they, even in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, it says these all, these Old Testament people, all died in faith, recognizing what God was going to do, but they never had it in their hands. They never saw it as a fact, as a matter of fact, but they lived it out and they believed it by faith. They understood what that God was going to do something. God was going to save them through their faith. And uh, so he says here that we are uh, stewards of the mysteries of God. Well, from that fact, he goes on to the next verse and he says, moreover. Now, when we see therefore or uh, other words like that, likewise, we look back at the 
previous verses or verses to see what it's what it's talking about. And when you see the word therefore, it says here's the here's the truth. And since we know this truth, now we need to do something about it. Therefore, we understand this or we need to do this. Moreover is a different word and it comes it says, okay, this is what the truth is. And besides all of this, moreover, this is true. So moreover, it is required in stewards, since we're talking about us being stewards of the mysteries of God, it's required that a man be found faithful. And so this is what we want to look at, faithfulness. Are we faithful stewards? A steward is a person who has been entrusted with something that belongs to someone else. And uh, when we look at the gospel message, we understand that this is God's message for the world. We have that message. We have the truth. We've made use of that truth as Christians. We are born again because we believe the good news of the gospel message. Now, God has entrusted that to us, and we need to be found faithful. That's it. That's all I have tonight. Found faithful. That's, and so let's be faithful. No, I have more. We're going to look at what the scripture says about that. We need to be found faithful. We need to use the gospel message the way God wants us to use it. Some people are a little bit afraid of, of I, don't, I don't know how to witness. Well, what is, what, is, what is a witness? If you go to a court, what does a witness do? Tells the truth that he knows. He tells his experience. And so when we witness, all we need to do is say what God has done for us. What God did. God did the, uh, in Jesus Christ, gave the, uh, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ to pay for our sins. And, and this, what I have done is I accepted that. I believe what God has said. You know, there's, there's no more than that. Just saying what God has done for mankind. That's what we need to know and that's what we need to uh, be a witness to. So a, uh, a steward is required to be found faithful. To be a person of faithfulness. We know that God is faithful. God is not going to give us anything that is untrue. God's not going to do something and tell us something and then not follow through with it. He is always faithful. Uh, God brings the sun around the earth every day. He's been doing that for how long? Thousands of years. Have you? How many of you have? I'm just curious. Okay, this this is aside from this. I'm just curious for you. Um, how many of you have ever thought, why doesn't the sun burn up? Did you ever think about that, or you just live with the sun burning? Okay, it's no big deal. Now, every time I build a fire, it goes out eventually, campfire or whatever, and the sun is burning, but why doesn't it go out? God keeps it burning, I know that, but does it make sense that it's burnt for thousands of years and it continues to burn? Anyway, let's go on. God is faithful. He doesn't allow the sun to go out. Paul is talking about us being custodians custodians of the gospel message and we need to be trustworthy trustworthy is another word we can use as faithfulness somebody who who god can trust to take the message of his love and his goodness to other people we need to be dependable dependable in our relationship with god and to other people People need to be able to depend on us to tell them the truth of what God has done. The Corinthians, he, he, he talks to them. He says, he says, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And he goes on in verse 3. And he says, but with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. He says, it, 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 for the way I say it, it might sound uh, rude and um, might even sound mean. But uh, Paul's telling them, listen, 
You might judge me, but it doesn't make any difference. Your judgment of me means nothing because I am not your steward. I am not your minister. I'm a minister for you, but I'm God's. And the person who's going to judge me and judge whether or not I am being a good steward is God himself. So he says, it's a very small thing uh, that I should be judged of you. Because I don't even judge myself. I do the best I can, and I let God do the judging. <clears throat> it's not up to anybody else. Look over at Romans chapter 14. Now, in, in, in Romans chapter 14, he's, he's uh, giving us examples of people um, <clears throat> picking apart other people. Somebody wants to um, eat meat that's sacrificed to an idol, and, it's, and they know it's just meat, so they eat it. And other people would judge them about that. Oh, that's that's wrong. That's no good. That's not what we should be doing. So he says, listen, it's not right to be judging in these things. Look at verse number four. Who art thou that judgest? Then he goes on. He says, another man's servant. To his own master, he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up for God is able to make him stand. It's not up to us to judge that person, whether he should be doing that or not. He is God's servant. He's talking about Christians now. And we are all God's servants, God's stewards. And we shouldn't be judging them in the way that they feel that they should be living for God. Now, we, we can tell, we understand when somebody sins. God has very clear uh, words on sin. Look at the Ten Commandments and other things in the Scripture. We know what God um, uh, is uh, approves of and doesn't approve of. And when somebody sins, yes, we can judge them on that sin. <clears throat> but he's saying it's not up to you to judge another man's servant. And they are the servants of God, so who should judge them? God. Sometimes even when we think about it ourselves... Where do I fit in? When I when I do something that I think is right before God and I and I explain it, sometimes I might think <clears throat> I'm afraid of what other people will think of me. I should to a certain extent. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of my message this morning. Remember I said, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with me. Out of other churches and pastors and stuff. And I said, this is going to be on YouTube and you can give them the, the uh, URL for that and let them listen to what I say. I don't know, I don't know if I made it clear, but uh, God is the judge. And it doesn't matter what other people think of me about what I see in Scripture. Because what I see and what I read in Scripture is what I believe. And I believe God says this and meant this. And I stand by it. And I stand before God, not to some other church or some other pastor. And here, Paul, that's what Paul's saying. We stand to God. And it says in verse 4, Yea, he shall be holding up. That person is going to be held up, for God is able to make him stand. He's standing before God. And if God doesn't want him to be believing a certain way, God's going to make it clear to him. <clears throat> So don't be judging these people. Let God do the judging. Go to Psalm 5. Sometimes people can be faithful to God, and we look at it and we say, think, oh, that's, 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 that's wrong. But again, we, we're not to judge. They may be uh, in their heart and mind faithful to God, and God is watching over them, but let God do the judging. Psalm 5, and look at verse number 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my fa uh, face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. This is, these are his enemies now. He says, talking about himself, 
um, lead me in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Make me to know which way you want me to go. Help me to walk your narrow way. Because those other people, he says, there is no faithfulness in their mouth. I can't trust them. They're going to be mean to me. They're going to, they're going to try to twist my words and, and take me down the wrong path. Lord, help me. He says, in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. My enemies, but the people who, they're, they're God's enemies that are going to try to make me swerve the wrong way. Lord, when you make my path straight and you guide me in the way you want me to go, help me to stay on that path. Help me not to go one way or the other. You know, the, the, the uh, <clears throat> I'll say the world, the government has tried to make it better for us, even on the highways. Years ago, they didn't have these little <clears throat> dips in the road on the, on the middle of the road or the out, uh, edge of the road. But now you go over to the side and you hear this... Durr! Why? Get back on the middle of the road. You go on the other way and it does it again. They're probably going to make them on every road. And, but it's to help us stay on the right way. Don't fall asleep. We go off to the side, we wake up. And so God, the psalmist here says, God, make my way straight. Don't let me go off to the side. Keep me in the middle of the road. Your way. But these people, these uh, evil people, their heart, their mouth is very wickedness, it says, their inward part. They're not going to keep their word. They're going to get me to do something wrong, making it sound like it's the right thing to do. And then when I go wrong, then they walk away from me and say, ha, 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 look what he did. I, I messed him up. No, they are wicked. So we need to listen to God. We need to be faithful to him. And what the psalmist is saying is to God is saying, God, keep me faithful. Keep me in your path, the way you want me to go. Help me not to listen to the other people. Go to Joshua chapter 3. and God wants us to understand that as we depend on him, he is faithful to us, but if we seek his guidance and his help, he's going to keep us faithful to him. We are going to be established in the truth, and we're going to stand firm. And we see the, an example of this as the children of Israel were um, crossing the Jordan River. Look at verse number 15. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan... And the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zaratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. You got the picture, right? Coming down, they're, they're crossing the Jordan River from the east to the west. And uh, to the north of them, all the water stood up on a heap. All the water that's coming down from the north uh, didn't have any place to go because God stopped them. And it just built up a wall of water, just like the Red Sea. But everything on to the left, as they're going across, uh, fizzled out because it went down to the Dead Sea. And so there was just no river built, uh, just a river bed uh, below them and a wall of water on the north side. Look at verse number 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. All the Israelites passed over on dry ground until the people were passed over, clean over Jordan. So the priests stood firm. How could they stand firm in the middle of a river that's overflowing its banks? We know the water stopped, but God did the stopping. God made it possible for them to stand firm in order for the people to pass over. Because if they, if they gave up and they walked, uh, kept going, 
uh, if once they got out of the out of the river bottom, the waters would have come over and the people would have still been on the east side. So God stood them firm in the middle so that all the people could walk over. We need to stand firm in Christ and stand firm in what God teaches us. That way we are faithful stewards of his gospel, faithful stewards of what he has given to us. Go over to 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm sorry, did I, I said chapter 3. It's cha chapter 7, verse 3. Chapter 7, verse 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. He said, listen, give up. Stop doing those evil things. Stop doing what, you, uh, what God has told you is wrong. And... Secure your hearts to the Lord. Be established and strong in what God teaches you. Stay that way. Uh, prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Stand by him. Be strong in what you believe and don't give up on that. Be strong in what you know is true. So you will be faithful to God. When we're wishy-washy, that's when we fail. When we're not sure about something, we give up and go the wrong way. Sometimes we've got to be very careful. Go over to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, look at verse number 42. Watch, therefore. We talked about watching last week, I think. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? A faithful, right? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Be ready. Jesus says, I'm coming back. And I'm coming back and nobody knows when I'm coming. So when are we supposed to be ready? Well, let's wait until, okay, I think he's coming. You know, there's so many people who have done that. Uh, Christ is coming on this day in 1984, and so everybody stopped paying their bills because they knew Christ was returning. And uh, I've heard of people sitting up on a roof waiting, not, not in 1984, <laughs> go back to 1800s, when they said that Christ was returning. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventists thought that at, this, at, at that time. And they'd sit on the roof thinking Christ is going to return. No, God says, you don't know when the, that time is. So if you don't know when he's returning, when should you be ready? Right now. Right now. At all times. Be ready. And if you're going to be ready, how are you ready? You're going to be faithful to him. Faithful in all the things we do. For him and even the things that, that we do for ourselves, we keep him in our hearts and minds. Faithful to God to be ready for his return. Faithful in every area of our lives. We look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And in that, that passage uh, tells us um, how does it, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. He didn't say whether therefore you, you uh, witness or pray, do it to the Lord. 
He says, whether therefore ye eat or drink. Did you know that you can eat to the glory of the Lord? But he also says, whatsoever ye do, everything, being faithful to God, whatever we do should be done for God's glory. Not just eating and drinking, but everything, every part of our lives. Look over at Luke chapter 16. I don't see flies buzzing around you guys, but I got two of them up here. At least they're not whispering in my ear. <laughs> Luke chapter 16, verse number 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore... Ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? What is unrighteous mammon? <clears throat> unrighteous mammon, normally we think of mammon as just money. Uh, but it also includes uh, anything. Anything that is material. And the way we treat it, it's, it's, it, it can be used for God. Or it can be used against God or indifferently. And then it becomes unrighteous. The things we have, the house we have, the cars we have, the money we have, uh, all of these things. He says, you need to be faithful in those things. God will give you more, something that's even more important. And so we have something more important than the unrighteous mammon. We have the gospel. We have the word of God. You know, the word of God, I, it, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I wish... I wish that uh, we could print Bibles. There are churches who who have uh, part of a ministry of putting together uh, Bibles. But we have left, the Christians in the past, have left printing of Bibles to publishing houses. Who, who, who is the rightful controller of God's word? Christians. Not some publishing house. They're out there making money, and they get sold. Uh, they're print. This is, I guess, off the subject, but they're they're printing Bibles, like Zondervan. Zondervan is not its own entity anymore. It's owned by another company that's a secular company, but it still does things like printing Bibles. It shouldn't be left to uh, unsaved people. It shouldn't be left to people where they're making money by it. We should be caretakers of God's word. We are his stewards, not Zondervan, not Baker, not, uh, not even uh, regular Baptist press. You know, we are caretakers of God's word. And we have that responsibility to be stewards. Look over Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, verse number 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. He's saying, listen, go God's way. Do God's will. Listen to what God is saying, and go straight ahead. Don't look off to the side and think, hey, this is, this is nice. I'm going to go do this. Moses did that in the wilderness, but that was right. He was watching the sheep, but he saw this off to the side, and it was burning bush, and he said, okay. I'm going to go that way. But that was God leading him. God doesn't lead us off the track. The way we get off track is from our own hearts or from somebody else pulling us away from doing God's will. He says, keep thy, uh, thine eyes right on, straight ahead, straight going God's way. Go to Luke chapter 22.
Jesus speaks to Peter. And he's telling Peter, you know, there's come, there's going to come a time, Peter, where you're going to be understanding more of what I've been teaching you. Jesus was with Peter for about three years, three and a half years. And it seems like Peter it took a long time for Peter to really get it. Many times Peter said, no, you can't do that, Jesus. And Jesus says, you can get one time, get behind, behind me, Satan. He wasn't saying he was the devil himself, but he said he was saying this uh, uh, the accuser of the brethren or the person who is, is uh, against God's will. He says, you get behind me because you're not thinking right. But he tells Jesus, tells Peter here, Jesus tells him there's going to come a time when you're going to be more um, able to do the will of God. Verse number well, let's look at verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Now, he says, he says don't, I, don't, I prayed for you that your faith is not going to fail. So if Jesus prayed for him, his faith isn't going to fail. So Peter's born again, right? Already, he's a believer in Christ, but look what Jesus says, and we have to look at this and say, okay, it means something than what we use it always for. He says, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The conversion here is not to be saved because Peter's already born again. He said, when you come to the point in your life where you finally get it, and you want to walk with me now, you have the ability to help other people. You know, there are people today who worry, maybe not, I shouldn't say worry, but consider themselves and wonder if they're really born again. You know, we can't, we can't live a proper Christian life if we're worried about that. I'm not sure I'm born again. No, listen, you better be sure because when you're sure, then you can help other people in their security. You're stronger. And this is kind of what, what Jesus is saying to Peter. Peter, when you are converted, when you come to that point where you are absolutely sure of what I have taught you, you're absolutely sure of what God wants in your life, now, now you can give strength to others. You can strengthen your brethren. When your faith, you know your faith is not failing. Peter, I think he finally got it. And when we, we have the first and second Peter in the Bible, go to second Peter and go to second Peter chapter three. In these both of these books, he's strengthening his brethren. Second Peter three, look at verse number 16. Now, what he's saying, he's, he's talking about Paul and what Paul writes in verse number 15. And he says so this uh, his is talking about Paul himself. He says in verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So uh, Paul wrote some things that are just hard to be understood. And Peter says, I, I understand that. But they're hard to be understood by those people who haven't learned. So Peter himself understands what Paul is saying. Yes, he can see that they're hard things, but he understands them himself. And he says, you need to grow in your walk with the Lord, grow in your knowledge, grow in your wisdom, so that when you read the things that Paul writes, you get it. You need to be strong in the Lord. Look at verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own what? Steadfastness. We need to be strong in the Lord. We need to know what God says. We need to be standing sure on what he says so that we can be the proper stewards of the mysteries and the, the gospel of the Lord. Go over to 2 
Thessalonians chapter 3. I mentioned we can't be wishy-washy. Paul, or James says it in James chapter 1. He says, don't be double-minded. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and we don't want to be unstable. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. It's what God does in our lives to keep us strong and secure in what he teaches us, what he wants us to know. We can't think, I can handle it. I can do it. I'll learn on my own. No, we need to learn from God because he's the one who establishes us. We need to be secure and strong so that we can be faithful. Faithfulness to God means that we're secure in what we know. We believe what we believe. And we're not going to allow somebody to sway us from that truth. Strong in the Lord. Go look at uh, Deuteronomy as God speaks to, to Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse number 31. In verse 30, it's, it, uh, he tells Moses, go say to them, get you into your tents again. So everybody goes away and now God speaks to Moses. But as for thee, stand thou here by me and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live and that it might be it may be well with you and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. God says, listen, you stay with me, stay strong in me, and you'll live long in the land that I give you. God wants us to be watching and listening. God wants us to be aware of the false teachings. Be aware of the things that can pull us away from him. We need to be faithful to him. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If we're not faithful, if we're not found faithful, we're the problem. It's not God. It's us. And we need to be walking with God. How God gets our attention is going to be up to him. But he'll get our attention, and we better listen and walk with him. We need to be watching, required in stewards, uh, that a man be found faithful, secure in God. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we seek your guidance, I pray that you'd help us to be strong in you, strong in the truth that you've given to us making clear the word of God and helping us to see the way we should walk. Not looking to the right hand or the left, but looking right on, straight ahead, the way you want us to go. And Lord, if we can be secure, like the priests were, standing secure in the Jordan River as you placed them there and gave them the strength to stand strong as the waters uh, piled up on the right-hand side. Lord, help us to seek your guidance and your help to be secure, to be the stewards of your word that we should be. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.